Hey guys, how are we doing today? So it's Saturday evening and I'm really excited because we've been invited to come out to the dark sector and check out one of the uh, one of the science buildings, one of the labs out there. Basically, a little bit of backstory. The station, if it's sitting right here, outside the station there are different like, these sectors that are you know, designated certain things depending on the science that's going on there. For example, there's the clean air sector, which is upwind of the entire station, so none of the, you know, um, exhaust from any of the vehicles or anything is going over there, and that's where they're doing things like climate research. But where we're going is known as the dark sector, and that's where all the, you know, astronomy type stuff is happening, and it's called the dark sector because you can't use your radio or anything like that while you're out there just because it'll interfere with the science. But we're going out to a place called MAPO, or the um, Martin A. Pomerantz Observatory. Robert Schwartz is going to be there, and he's the guy who works it, and he's an absolute legend as far as winners at the South Pole go. This is his 13th winter, and as far as I know, he's signed up to do another one next year, so there'll be 14 winters down here. Just absolutely crazy, but he loves it, and it's awesome. And uh, yeah, he's going to show us around. Apparently, he's got a flight simulator there, so we can play with that. Who knows? I'm really excited. So let's go. Really got to bundle up. It's uh, it's like negative hundred out there with with wind. It's only sixty without though. Uh, not too bad actually. Not too bad. So it looks like we're going to be heading out there with Hunter. Um, good friend Zach's already out there. He was going to go out there with us, but he didn't want to wait. So uh, I think we're meeting him out there. This Hunter, it's time to go. And now we're here. That was a bit of a walk. Uh, it's cold. Let's check this place out. Hello, Robert. So it's my turn? I've never done this before. This will be fun. Wait, where am I going though? I'm going to focus on where I'm going to try to land, right? That's bad. That's good. Step forward. I will go to the side. Push it all the way forward. Can I go? I don't know if I'm going to make it on this one. By the way, I uh, landed the flight. Not really, I kind of crashed. The memory card filled up though before we could film it. So you can even fly in Antarctica. That's that's awesome. Ah, it's McMurdo! So what happens if you try to fly in the pole? There's literally Ivan and a Herc. That's incredible. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and get a little tour now of Maple after doing some flight simulator for a couple hours. <laughs> Robert's going to show us around. So wait, what are you going to do now, Robert? Oh, you're moving. So we're moving. Who's moving? We're moving, probably. Are you sure? Yeah, except that's really, that's really trippy. <laughs> Who's moving? We don't know. So this is the telescope, yeah? Yeah. So what's, is this the detector? There's five detectors. Okay. Each of them is like bicep two. Watch your head. <laughs> oh, it's moving above me. <laughs> so you can rotate. Oh, wow. Around that axis. 400 degrees. This telescope is like a giant ohmmeter in a, in a thermos can, basically. And the operating temperature is a quality degree above absolute zero, so minus 454 Fahrenheit. The chipping you can hear yeah. is a uh, pulse tube coolers. Okay. So it's like um, high, low helium pressure, and that gets it down to about 3 Kelvin. There are two reasons why we want to be so cold. One is there's a um, radiation uh, we look at, the cosmic microwave background, 
corresponds only to a temperature only of 3 Kelvin. So if you uh, hold the detector, it's much, much warmer. You kind of like trying to look at a small light in front of the sun, then you're not gonna really yeah. see it. And the other thing is, we are right at the jump between superconducting and normal conducting. Mm -hmm. yeah, if it would be superconducting, you wouldn't see anything. And if it would be normal conducting, the difference would be so minimal. But because it's right at this jump between superconducting and, and normal conducting, the smallest amount of energy causes like um, a readable signal. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how we can be so sensitive and observe a signal that 13.8 billion years on its way to get into the detector. <laughs> and we can that's actually so cool. see it. Stop moving. <laughs> you actually start to get a little bit dizzy as it as it spins around. <laughs> you can barely feel it, but you can. It's really weird. It means like there's like um, you see like a certain polarization pattern mm -hmm. like once like in the beginning to equalize the temperature. Mm -hmm. And um, but if you assume that like the early universe for part of a second like it was from 10 to the power of minus 38 to the 10 to the power of minus 36 seconds, it exponentially expanded, uh -huh. then from the size of an atom to the size of like a grapefruit or a basketball. It's just a theory, so we try to explain it or like to prove it. And um, if that really happens, like the uh, assumption is that it would have caused very strong gravitational waves. So we're trying to find out this um, polarization. And BICEP had like some really strong polarization pattern. We could see it finally, and it was awesome. But um, we're looking at a signal that's 13.8 billion years away. So we hope it's, it's originating here at the CMB, mm -hmm. but maybe something always will originate here. And we just see it like on the last bit, and that actually happens. And dust can kind of mimic this polarization as well. My bicep 2 and or Viso over the past years could be all dust to our own galaxy and we don't see anything mm -hmm. but it could be still that there's like 50% good signal in it mm -hmm. but we don't know. So we try to understand the dust better. So we always still have three normal CMB receivers and two dust receivers. 16 we only had one normal receiver and four dust receivers and this year we only have five dust receivers but we're basically just looking at the dust to try to understand the dust better. One. So Robert, can you like explain it in like five sentences? <laughs> what exactly you're doing? Yeah, one second. <laughs> so that was really cool, but also really complicated. Okay, we are, we are observing the CMB, which is the afterglow of the Big Bang. And we try to find a proof for the inflation theory that like the early universe in the first second can exponentially expand it for a very, very brief period. And that's like kind of, at the moment, the holy grail of cosmology, but it's just a theory and we try to find a, try to prove it with like experimental evidence and that's what we're trying to do. If you can find it and prove it, and it can, the proof can withstand all the doubts and everything, that will be like Nobel Prize potential. There you have it. <laughs> So there you have it. We've been here for a few hours now at Mapo, and um, yeah, it's been an absolutely awesome time. Robert was really great. Got some great snacks, got to play the flight simulator, uh, went up in the telescope, learned all about it. It was really freaking cool. So I'm um, really happy about that, and, yeah, and kind of like I said it back at the station, Robert's kind of a legend down here at the pole. I mean, he's been here 13 times, so he really knows pretty much about everything. He's met it pretty much, you know, he's met all these people, and it's been really cool to, you know, get to know him and come out here. But for now, we're going to go take some photos. Uh, it's probably where I'm going to cut the video, though. I'll throw the photos on at the very end, just so you can kind of see them and what it looks like outside right now. It's not the best conditions, but, you know, we'll do what we can. Uh, yeah. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Got to get geared up real quick and then head out.